Hi guys, welcome back to another Unity Touch tutorial. My name is Devin, and today we're going to be creating joysticks to complete our first-person camera controller for mobile games. The joystick will move us forward, backward, left, and right, and we'll also create a joystick to rotate our camera uh, left, right, up, and down, in case you don't want to use the swipe pad that we created in the last tutorial. So right now, a quick overview of the scene. It's uh, exactly the same as we had it in the last tutorial. We just have this uh, swipe pad that will rotate our camera and that cube right there. Um, yeah, so now we're going to create a joystick that will move our player. And then after that, we'll make the joystick that will rotate our player. Um, yeah, so right now, I'm just going to create a GUI texture real quick. This will be our joystick. Let's move it over there, and I'll call it a uh, joy move. All right now, let's also create a C sharp script. We'll call this joystick, and we'll open that up. All right, so in here. We're not going to use that. Do that. Move that down. We're going to inherit from Touch Logic, as always. And um, let's see what are we, we're going to want. Uh, well, first, this script is going to go on our joystick, um, and we're going to want access to our player, or our player's transform. Uh, so we can tell the joystick to move the player. Uh, we're also going to want some floats. Public float uh, to control the player speed. We'll just set that to like two. Um, and we're also going to want a float to control the uh, max distance that our joystick is allowed to move across the screen. And uh, I'm going to be using the transform positions of the joystick, uh, which are, uh, these are percentages of the screen, so 0.2 position means 20% of the screen inward, um, and this is half of the screen Y. Uh, if you want to mess with uh, exact pixel values, you can play with uh, pixel inset over here, but uh, I'm going to use the transform positions. So my values for the delta joy distance are going to have to be really small. So uh, joy delta is going to be there. I'll call this max joy delta. Max joy delta. Alright. Um, oh, we're also going to want to cache a few things of our joystick. They're going to be vector threes. We're going to want to um, cache the original position, which will be this information. Um, and I'm going to call that O for original position, uh, joy position. And we're also going to want the uh, joy delta. So we're going to have the original joystick position and the new joystick position, uh, which I'll call Joy Delta. And that's all the Vector 3s that we need. And let's also go ahead and cache our uh, joystick's transform so we don't have to look, uh, we don't have to look it up every, every frame. So instead of saying this dot transform dot position will just say joy trans dot position. Um, and uh, let's actually go ahead and add a character controller to our camera so we can just use the uh, the simple move functions. Uh, I'm gonna make that public character controller. We'll call this controller. Right, so to initialize the script, we're going to want to cache um, the joystick position. Actually, let's cache our transform first. 
So that will equal this dot trans transform. And we're also going to want to cache the original position, which will be joytrans dot position. All right, and we're going to use those later. Um, let's see. So we're going to want to do a few things uh, before we can actually use the joystick to move our character. We're going to want to uh, use the onTouch began function that we defined in our touch logic script to uh, say, all right, when a touch starts on our joystick, we're going to want to remember this touch index. So, like, our touch logic script is going to be calling on touch began for every touch that begins on the screen. We're only going to want our joystick to move the player when the touch that started on the joystick is the touch that moved. So we're going to have to cache cache the touch index that started on the joystick. Um, and I'm actually going to modify our touch logic script so this will be available to all uh, scripts that inherit from it. And it will be a public uh, integer. And we'll call it touch to watch. This will be the touch that we need to watch. And we're going to make it, uh, just make it anything implausible. It's like a, a touch index, a touch index that will probably never happen. Like 64, it'll be hard for people to put 64 fingers on the screen. Um, and we're not going to modify this at all in this script. Actually, let's, uh, let's go ahead and hide this in the inspector because we don't need to modify it there. Uh, right, so that's all we got to do in here. Um, but in here, this script in our joystick is where we're going to actually modify that. So on touch began will be called when a touch, when a finger touches our joystick. Um, so we're going to want to cache that touch. So we're going to say touch to watch, and we have access to that because we are inheriting from touch logic. Touch to watch equals touch logic. Dot current touch and touch logic dot current touch is the uh, public static variable that never changes well it always changes it's changing based on this loop for all the touches that are on the screen but it can never be different across any uh, any instances of the script right so now that we have that cached we're going to want to um, see when it's moved so on Touch, you know, I'm just going to copy paste this. On touch moved anywhere. On touch moved anywhere. We're going to want to check if the touch that moved is the touch that we're watching. So we're going to say if touch logic dot current touch if the touch that moved is the touch that we are watching, or it's equal to the touch that we're watching, the touch index, then we're, then we're going to want to move the joystick. Alright, so to move the joystick we're just going to modify the joystick position, and we're going to set it equal to, well we're going to have to do some calculations uh, for that. And I'm actually going to separate that out into its own function because that's going to be uh, kind of lengthy. So I'm going to call this move joystick. Um, yeah. So we're going to make a new function and we're not going to put void because we actually want it to return a value. We're going to want it to return a vector 3 position. So we're going to say vector 3 move joystick, and then in here uh, we're going to 
we're going to calculate the new position of that joystick. So in here, we're going to define a new vector 3, and I'm going to call it position. And we're going to do all the logic in there to calculate what the new position is. And at the end of this function, we're going to want to return that value. Uh, so yeah, we're going to calculate the new position in this function, and then we're going to return it back out to wherever it was called. So this will equal this. Um, right. So we're also going to need to make uh, some float values x and y, and we're going to set x equal to input dot get touch, and it's going to be the touch to watch. Uh, so we want to find where that position is. So we're going to say that dot position dot x. Um, but we don't want to get just that because that will give us a hard pixel value, which would be useful if we were using the pixel insets. But since we're using the uh, transform positions, we're going to need to convert that to a percentage of the screen. So uh, we can do that pretty easily. We just need to divide it by the screen dot width. And we're also going to make a y float, and that's going to be equal to, oops, forgot the equal sign there. It's going to be equal to pretty much the same thing except for height and y. Alright, so I, I separated those out into their own uh, things, so we can just uh, plug them in here without having to make that one line so long that it goes off the screen. Uh, so yeah, we could just plug those in. Um, x, oops, vector 3x, y, and 0, because we're not changing z at all. So, this joystick should be able to move around now when we touch it. So let me touch that, and there we go. We can move our joystick across the screen, but you can see that it is not limited at all right now. Um, and when I just let go right there, it didn't snap back into place. So first we're going to limit it, um, and to do that we're going to need to clamp that value, so we're going to say math f dot clamp and we're going to clamp the x value and the we're going to clamp it between two values uh, the min and the max the min is going to be where is it joy original joy position Um, minus max joy delta. That's x. And then the max position, max position will be the same thing except plus. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move that down. I'm going to do the same thing for here for y, except this will be y, y, and y. Alright, so now if I go back and hit play, yeah, so the uh, joystick is now limited in the x and the y. No matter how far I drag my finger across the screen, the joystick will limit itself. But it still does not snap back into place. So we're going to fix that right now, and we're going to say... No, oh, I don't need to do that. Void on touch ended anywhere. Um, yeah, yeah. Might as well have just copied the whole thing, but 
Yeah, so on touch ended anywhere. If the touch that ended is the touch that we are watching, then we're going to move the joystick back to its uh, ridge position. Um, and I could just copy this, paste it there, get rid of those. Oh, and also I'm uh, I'm also gonna change touch to watch back to 64, so uh, our joystick doesn't watch some other index, whatever is next in line, when we lift our finger. So now, if I touch the joystick right there and move it around, max it out somewhere, let go, it'll snap back to its original position. Awesome! So now we have a joystick that moves, but we need to take those uh, joystick deltas and convert that into a player movement. So one more thing that we're going to have to do inside of here before we can apply this uh, movement to a player, we're going to have to stick it into our joy delta so we can keep track of the delta distance that our joystick has traveled. Uh, so joy delta is going to be equal to a new vector 3. It's going to be equal to the, the position dot x minus the original position dot x. Um, and we're not going to want to put y in here because uh, when we move our player around, if we move y, he's going to go up and down. And we don't want him to go up and down, we want him to go forward and backwards when we move y on the joystick. So we're going to set y to 0, and z is going to be calculated with the y values. Um, and we're going to normalize that, so it's a value between 0 and 1. Uh, and then we're going to multiply that normalized value by the player speed to control how fast the player goes. If we don't add normalized, he's going to go insanely fast, and we don't want that to happen. Alright, so now that we have the joy delta calculated out, um, we're going to make a new function called uh, apply joy values. Or apply delta joy, let's call it that. And we're going to call this function on touch moved anywhere. And we're also going to want to call that on um, on touch stayed anywhere. So if we're holding the joystick down forward, uh, he should still be moving. He shouldn't only be moving when the joystick is moved. And we don't need to move the joystick if touch state. So now we're going to need to grab the player's character controller, which we've called troller, and we're going to move it in a vector 3 direction. The vector 3 direction that we're going to move him in is forward in uh, Z, and left and right on X. We don't want to move him in Y at all. Uh, so we're going to take the player's forward vector, multiply that by the joy, the joysticks delta dot z, which we've calculated down here, um, so that'll control the forward and backward movement of our joystick, or of our player with our joystick. And we're also going to want to go player dot right vector and multiply that by the joy delta dot x. Yeah. And then we're going to want to multiply all of that by the player speed play. Play, yeah, oops. Player speed 
multiply all of that by the player speed and time dot delta time so it stays consistent across all devices. Um, yeah, so let's go into our joy stick and move our player into there and there. And then let's test him out. Alright, so if I tap on the joystick, yep, there he goes, he's moving. Yeah, so I can move forward, backwards, to the right, and to the left. Awesome! And we could still rotate around with the touchpad. Alright, so that wraps it up for this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to create another joystick to control rotation instead of this, uh, this touchpad. So we're going to get rid of that, put a new joystick over, and use it to rotate the camera. Um, yeah, so be sure to like and subscribe if this tutorial was helpful. Uh, you can also now follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr um, to get updates from me whenever I release a new tutorial. Uh, yeah, so thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again in the next tutorial.